This journey started in the 60s, and I have fished from Alaska to Florida, hunted the Arctic for caribou, and combed the coastlines of Kodiak and the Aleutian Islands in search of meaning and purpose. These excursions exemplify a deeper understanding of success beyond that of just catching fish or bagging big game. They are about the chase and learning who you are. They are about exploring, appreciating, and respecting the vast expanses of our nation's forests, lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans, and finding our place in the universe. My name is Gene Quinney. These are my stories, this is my life, and these are my adventures. Hitch lock is down, chains are in, lights are on, safety chain is on, straps are down, got my seat, got my net, got my gear, plug is in, lights work, kickers locked down, looks like I'm ready to go. It is foggy out. For the last three or four days, it's been absolutely gorgeous. Sun's been out and it's been warm. And now it's foggy. Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. It is absolutely gorgeous. Nobody here except one vehicle. It's probably in a little boat or a kayak. Man. So peaceful and quiet out here. Let me get the boat ready, launch the boat, and I'll see you out on the water. Another boat just pulled up. Okay. I'm gonna, I've got these things ready to go. I'm just gonna pull out here a little bit farther and let me show you exactly what I have going on. My plan for today is only to fish for a few hours. I gotta head back to the office and get some work done. Look at that. I beat the morning rush. And I like to start right here at the launch and just go to my spot that I think I'm gonna catch fish because there's always a lot of fish right here in this area. But let me uh, stop for a second. The motor's already warmed up and let me show you exactly what I have going on. This is gonna be the surface rod. If you check out my videos, you'll see how I make uh, this dropper weight rig. Get that out of the way. So this is the dropper weight. We're gonna have uh, one ounce on here, cannonball on the slider. And then this is going to be the surface rod. We're going to put this back 60 feet to start. So this half-fast arrow dodger here and about a 10, 12-inch uh, leader with a mini hoochie and some gulp maggots. That's going to be on the surface rod. 60 feet back to begin with. I might go 80 if I'm not catching them at 60. Then the downrigger rod it's going to have this flasher on here with a rubber snubber. Same link leader, same exact mini hoochie, and gold packets. I'm going to put the downrigger rod 40 feet, um, 40 feet back at the clip. And then I'm going to start off probably at 20 feet, then go to 30 feet, then 40 feet as far as depth goes, depending on where I mark fish. Okay. God, I hate it when that happens. Okay, we'll get the downrigger rod out first. And we're gonna go 40 feet. Going back slowly now so it doesn't drop vertically. Don't want it to get tangled up. Every now and then I stop it. I'm gonna go to 40 feet. Okay. Then we're gonna clip it into the to the clip. 
You can see it. Clip it in there. Open the bale and drop it down. We'll start it. Start at 27 feet. The reason I want to start there is because the surface rod is going to be covering everything above 27. So I don't want to have two rods at the same depth. Okay. All right. Well, that one's fishing. And we are marking a couple of fish right there already. So let's try to get this out before we catch one. That way we can have total pandemonium with two fish on at the same time. Ooh, nice, nice little bunch of fish right there. That one's fishing. And we're gonna go back on this one 60 feet. The reason I like starting here at the dock is because there's every time I come out here, I always mark a lot of fish in this area right here. So I figure, why not a figure? <laughs> so I figure, why not fish through it on my way to the dam? I like fishing over by the dam. And again, we're dropping this one down nice and slow too. You don't want it to fall and get tangled up. 60 feet. I guess I need a rod holder, huh? Come on. Get in there. Okay. Okay. Well, folks, it looks like we're fishing. Oh, and we've got a nice group of fish right below us. Uh, 50 feet. Oh, 30 to 50 feet. I gotta go down. I gotta go down. I'm gonna take this one down to 40. 5, 7, 8, 9, 40 feet. <coughs> There's been more fish deeper. <coughs> Excuse me, as opposed to being on the surface, so... I need one rod down there. Nice school of fish here, 1.5, 1.6 miles per hour. School right below the boat at 50 feet. I'm surprised we haven't caught anything yet. A little bit of wind back there. <sighs> yeah, that's crazy, there's a lot of fish. A lot of fish right at 50 feet right there. 1.7, 1.8. You know, you pass through or over a school of fish like that and you're thinking to yourself, how do you not catch a fish? <laughs> Are those fish crazy? Don't they know that they can eat? We have an awesome offering for them. We're just handing it over to them, serving it up. And they don't hit. <laughs> Okay. I don't know what it is with me. Uh, I'm a creature of habit. And I like to start off with the same stuff I use on every lake, uh, just to see if it works. And when it doesn't, that's when I change. Uh, other things I always do is like when I hit the, hit the reservoirs, I always like to fish near the dams for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's just the way my brain works. It seems like the fish are gonna be more active towards the dam because that's where all the water flows to, gets backed up, and you know, there might be more food source at that area. That's just that's just me. I could be totally wrong. But uh, I'm always like when I'm on Rife Lake, I always like to fish in front of the dam. When I come here to Alder Lake, I like to fish in front of the dam. So, dam. Still marking a lot of fish. 
took my fish ID off and still marking. <laughs> I've been changing all kinds of different combinations of flashers and colors and lengths and spoons and whatnot since nothing. It's actually kind of cold. I think it's only like 44 degrees. I didn't dress properly. Oh man. Oh. 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 Stretch. I usually stretch in the morning for 20 minutes, hit the treadmill in the morning for 20 minutes and then do some free weights. Except for on days when I'm fishing. But, oh, this is gonna be a good way to stretch out my back. Still not 100% from my last injury. But, oh, yes. Do some calisthenics to warm up too. Maybe some jumping jacks. Something to get the fish going. Come on, fish. Holy moly, there we go, there we go. There's one. Okay. There's a fish. Oh, I think he came off. Oh my gosh, she slammed it too. Oh my, oh no. Oh. Oh, let me check my bait. Oh. My drag was set too tight and he was slamming on it. Oh, no, he's still there. He's still there. <laughs> okay. Just stop fighting for some reason. Good. Keep some tension on this bad boy. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. Now he just decided he wanted to fight. Come on. Into the net. There we go. Fish in the net. Oh, look at that beautiful fish. I do plan on keeping this fish because this, these uh, coastal cutthroat in here are really good. Good eating. I'll show you to you in a second here. Here we go. These are super cool fish. It's not a rainbow. They're known as coastal cutthroat. And you can see the, the little orange cut underneath their gills. But that's what they have here in Alder Lake, are these uh, coastal cutthroat. I thought I lost them there for a second. And I'm still marking fish all over this place. Literally all over. <clears throat> okay, let me show you what I let me show you what I caught them on. I switched up from what I what I usually use, which are uh, hoochies with spinners and uh, smile blades on them. And I just went with a basic, it's like a little, it's like a little coho killer. And this half and half brass and chrome dodger. Regular old trout rig here. On the surface, no weight. Um, 100 feet back. So the water's a little murky, dark. Visibility's really bad. 
So what I decided to do was take all my weight off and go really shallow, try to keep it up toward the surface where the flashers and dodgers might be getting a little more, you know, a little more light and visibility. Hoping fish may be able to come up because all the fish that I've been marking are have been really deep. Well, it worked. Let's see if we can do that again. And I have the downrigger really shallow too, only 45 feet. I'm gonna have to maybe put a spoon on that one too and get rid of the hoochie. What's going on? Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. There's another. Slow down a little bit on the turn here. I went into this area because I seen two fish rise and it's really super shallow here. It's only, it was only 35 feet. And it worked. A shallow approach <laughs> is just coming in, surfing in with me. Got my net extended way out there. Drop my net. Come on, baby. In the net, in the net, in the net. There we go. One fish in the net. There he is, flopping around. Oh, and I did a circle on my downrigger. Oh, that's no good. So it looks like I need to go shallow on both rods and just ditch the downrigger. I could actually quit right now because I only come out to catch a, a meal, you know, a dinner. One fish for me and one fish for my wife is just fine. Works perfect for us. Uh, but I'm gonna fish a little bit more, see if I can't um, catch more fish in this area on the surface because I think that's what's gonna be effective. So that's, from this point on, I'm just gonna actually kinda, you know, test my theory. Let me show you what I caught that one on. Dropper rig with no no weight on it. The half and half dodger here, and just a that guy right there. I don't know the name of this, but it looks like a looks like a little coho killer. Right there, park right there. Oh yeah. Okay. My plan has worked. Fishing the shallow water, we're only in 18 feet of water here. Instead of fishing deep. Okay. Come on. Here we go. Into the net. Perfect. Now that I've got three fish, I have to catch one more. That'll make four fish, two meals for me and my wife. But I'm just gonna make a couple more passes over this spot here. 100 feet. I'll just pass it underneath. Put it back there. <laughs> That's my rod holder. Just kind of wedged between my seat and that stanchion for the other, for the rod holder there. I'll fix it properly. Uh, don't want to be too hokey. I don't mind a little hoke. We are at um, 35 feet of water, 1.6 miles an hour, 48 degrees. There's a lot, it's a, you know, it's not that deep here and there's a lot of structure down there. I think that's why the fish are kind of hanging out in this area. We should be getting hit any minute now. Oh, yes, 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 look at that. Slammed it and came back. 
slammed it and came back. This one feels a little bit bigger than the last two. Okay. And I gotta put this rod in the rod holder. Keep tension on this fish. Little trusty net. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, come on. Oh no. Tangled, wrapped, there we go. <laughs> this one feels like it's a little better fish. net into the net for fish number four that's a much nicer fish and it's that that lure again look at that one a little long and skinny <laughs> that fish was not doing his his uh, his push-ups Okay, well, I'm going to take this rod out of the water and call it a day. So it just goes to show you, when you switch things up, change things around a little bit, it makes a big difference. So what I did was normally I fish with hoochies, you know, with spinners or smiley blades on them. And um, in deeper water, because that's what's worked before here. But, you know, I fished for about an hour and a half or two hours with nothing going on in the deeper water. And so I figured with the water being discolored and the visibility really bad and being overcast like this, I thought, you know, the, the, the flash from the flashers and the action would be more visible in more shallow water. So that's what I did. I focused it closer to the bank in 50 to 60 feet of water and in this area here which is only in 30 or 40 feet of water and once i seen the fish uh, uh you know surfacing i just went both rods went to both rods on the surface and so that's what that's what did it uh caught four fish relatively quickly once i changed tactics thank you for tuning into the channel thank you for watching this episode if you're not subscribed to the channel please do so i would appreciate it i'll see you later peace love and tight lines bye now If you liked this video, be sure to check out our other videos where you'll join us on the ocean catching kings and silver salmon, the lakes catching kokanee trout and landlocked coho. We'll also be working our riverfront homestead and harvesting venison. Stay tuned for more fishing and hunting and outdoor adventure videos. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you get notifications of new uploads. Thank you for watching.